really want to use them anytime you had individuals nested in a level two um, that was large enough. So pretty much everybody who does research on people in countries does stuff like this. Um, people in schools, really common. Uh, organizational research does this. So if you're looking at um, the effects of um, a, you know, an organizational level outcome on individuals within organizations, you would want to use a multi-level models then. Um, with the patient doctor example, again, is a good one where you would want to look at doctor characteristics, but you've got a sample of doctors and their patients. And so you would assume that the patients are more similar to each other by doctor than they are to one another. Same, same deal with countries a lot of times or regions. Uh, we want to look at fertility outcomes. We would expect that people in the same country would probably have more similar pro um, fertility outcomes than people in other countries or that country level predictors are going to be useful when understanding fertility outcomes. So for estimating fertility, certainly a mother's age, for example, mother's education is gonna be an important factor, but we'd also expect that country level GDP to be a pretty big factor in cross national differences in fertility. So expect countries with higher GDP or individuals in countries with higher GDP to have lower fertility than those in countries with, well, I guess it's kind of a U-shape actually, but, uh, so while we've only talked about two level models in our examples thus far, you can also have three or more levels. So if we were interested, for example, of uh, individuals in schools, in school districts, we could do that as well. And not only that, we could also estimate random intercepts for not only level one, but also level two. So we had a mo if we had more levels, we could estimate more parameters. So if we had students in classes, in schools, in districts, in states, we actually have a five level model and we'd be able to estimate random intercepts for all four up to the top level. Same way with random coefficients, we can start estimating them at, random, or at various levels um, except the top. Again, keeping in mind that this is increasingly, um, making the model increasingly complex. It's fairly common. In cross-national research, people uh, will do um, three-level models. So they'll do individuals nested in country years, nested in countries, assuming that um, you know, the countries are going to be consistently enough, consistent enough across time. But also we have, um, this would be in a multi-wave data set. So if we had individuals across countries in 1980, 1990, 1995 and 2000, we have several country years. We'd also have hopefully several countries. And in that way, we could create a three level model and try to estimate some things that might've happened um, at the country level and also controlling for the clustering that would happen at the country year. So you can use multi-level models without any level two variables. These would still account for the clustering within countries, although it's less common. Typically, multi-level models are used when we're primarily interested in how level two effects affect level one outcomes. So in this case, uh, if we're looking across schools, we're most interested in how school funding affects student outcomes, taking into account that student SES is also likely to have an effect. So if there's no, like, yeah, there's no between group differences, then you don't need to be using a multi-level model because they're complicated and there's no need to make your research more complicated than it has to be. While these models allow for us to control for a lot of the between country variation, we still, when we're only looking at a cross section, we're still only providing descriptive analyses. So, which is to say, these are not causal. And so your language in writing up your results so should reflect as such. Um, again, we've controlled for a lot of the variation and adjusted the model so that the estimate should be as accurate as possible. To make a truly causal argument, we would need some sort of temporal data, and that would be um, multiple waves, for example, of data over time. Multi-level models are a useful tool when we're interested in how observations nested within groups are affected by both level one and level two outcomes. They're pretty easy to utilize. Um, given the adequate data structure, and can give you a lot of useful descriptive information on how level two characteristics impact level one outcomes. 
Um, just be careful that you're using them adequately um, and safely. Thank you.